That. That's... <laughs> the, is, look at the clips on there. <laughs> Stick to the script, Jennifer. <laughs> The, no, you, you here. That's for you. Put it on your pocket or something, okay, right? And then you, you got the wire on. Okay. And then I walk up and down. I pretend like I'm, <laughs> you know, a lawyer or something. <laughs> I thought you said you've seen the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Yes. All right. Please state your name for the folks at home. Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> Where are you from, Jennifer? Crescent City, California. Crescent City? Yes. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> Where is it? 30 minutes to the Oregon border on the coast. Oh, so way up there. Yes. Way up there. That's 30 minutes by foot. <laughs> <laughs> driving. 30 minutes by driving. Yes. I see. You're not a scientist, are you? <laughs> So, Jennifer, you came, you've come a long way to see... I, I presume you're here to see the show. Are you any other reason to be in Los Angeles? Disneyland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, like, if you like entertainment, I suppose. <laughs> so, anyone with you, Jennifer? Anyone here with you? My husband. Oh, your husband. Where is he? He's in the vehicle. He's in the vehicle? <laughs> what do you mean, the vehicle? Are you a law enforcement officer? <laughs> He gets embarrassed by me because I laugh a lot at your show and he didn't want to be embarrassed by sitting next to me. So that's why he didn't want to come. Wait, wait. Your husband is waiting outside in the Tootsie Fruitsie. Huh? go shopping for groceries, you and your husband? Do you, do you both go into the supermarket or does someone wait in the car? Usually I just go, he stays home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the name of this uh, gentleman you're married to? Jesse. Jesse? Yes. Second name? His last name? Jesse. <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> Crescent City, Oregon. Crescent City, California. Oh, right, yeah, near Oregon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have a, uh, an email or a, <laughs> an, e an email or, or a Twitter account, or maybe the folk, folks could send him a bit of hate mail? I could give, I could give you a cell phone. Oh yeah, go ahead then. <laughs> <Not a minute. laughs> God, don't get your panties in a bunch. She knows not to do it. <laughs> I would do it though. I would. I would totally do it. So are you going to tell him you were on the show? Don't tell him. Don't tell him <laughs> so that when watch. he watches the show today, I can say, Jesse, what's up? Come on, I go. Visit Progressive.com today. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Deserve. Thanks, everybody. That was really great. Very spontaneous and realistic. <laughs> Why must we go through the charade night after night? They hate me. I know they hate me. But I don't care because I get off on weird stuff. <laughs> Do I get off on weird stuff? Yes, he does. Ah, yes, I do. 
<laughs> and when a robot skeleton thinks you're weird, you're weird. <laughs> right? Yes, you are. <laughs> I like this new voice. What's that about? I'm just something I'm trying out. All right, all right, let's give it a go. It is a great day for America, everybody. It is. It is, though. It's a, it's a sad day for Herman Cain. Over the weekend, he dropped out of the Republican presidential race, and some people are very upset about this. These people are called Democrats. <laughs> Herman Cain said he wants to spend more time with the wife. Not, not his wife, just now. <laughs> a... <laughs> I think he probably likes some weird stuff too, don't you think? Yes, he does. Yeah. Today's a very important day for historians and drunks. It's repeal day. This is the anniversary when the, you know, of the glorious day when prohibition was repealed in 1933. Now, some of you, of course, might not remember prohibition. I say some of you because we do have a few viewers younger than 80. <laughs> prohibition was a dark time. Alcohol was illegal. Uh, peppermint lattes had not been invented yet. How did people make it through the day? I'll tell you how. Crystal meth. That's <laughs> what they used, but back then it was called spunky dust. Yeah. Hey, shopkeeper, got any spunky dust? Yes, I'm just cooking up a fresh batch in the rear. Look out, Ivan, here comes Johnny Yankee with his spunky dust. That's how they talked back then, you know. Yeah, I like that. That's very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still, you're, you're really committing to that voice then, are you? Just leave me alone, will you? <laughs> All right, we've got, we've got a lot of mail. If you stick, if you change things around here, people get angry. Uh oh. oh. Is that a new catchphrase? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, alcohol was illegal in this country from 1919 to 1933. 14 years. Not a single person in 14 years sang any karaoke. <laughs> People back then thought prohibition would never end, then suddenly one day it was gone. Like that, like Herman Cain. Right there and then gone. I think prohibition is a fantastic idea, because if you make something illegal, people stop doing it. <laughs> That's why I hope they never ban scrapbooking. Hey, G-Man, if you want me to quit scrapbooking, you'll have to take the glue from my cold dead hand. That's right. We have a picture of me with my scrapbooks. What the hell, man? <laughs> there you are. Anyway, prohibition was repealed in 1933. The government, uh, you know, what happened after they repealed prohibition, the government, it turned the economy around. The government got huge tax revenues that they had, they'd been spending money keeping this stuff down. And now they made it legal and all this money came pouring in. It got us out of the Great Depression. If only there were something we could legalize and tax now to help about as a recession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I just found out who the audience is, yeah. <laughs> you know, the marijuana activists always draw parallels between prohibition and the war on drugs, but then again, marijuana activists also draw parallels between Pink Floyd and the Wizard of Oz, so... <laughs> it does work, though. Have you ever tried it? You start the movie and put on... It doesn't. <laughs> Anyway, this is Repeal Day. We have a headline from this day in 1933 in the newspaper there. You can't drink! Repeal voted. Yeah. <laughs> Newspapers made a big deal when Prohibition was repealed. I, well, I should back up. A newspaper is something that people used to read. It was a... <laughs> it's a big, papery blog, and it had all of yesterday's news inside it. We see the headline again. Now, look, what's that thing down at the bottom of the page there? Is it right down there? <laughs> Anyway, now, pro Prohibition, of course, was made uh, possible by the passage of the 18th Amendment. Then it was repealed with the 21st Amendment, which said, forget all that stuff in the 18th Amendment. Uh, sorry, forget it. <laughs> go, everybody go out and get drunk. <laughs> the 21st Amendment went on to say, uh, beer before liquor, never been sicker. Uh, <laughs> it also said, wine before rum, you'll wake up with a sore bum. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have made that one up. From personal experience. 
<laughs> that was a good night. <laughs> Playing before rum. Uh, during Prohibition, people had to go to the speakeasies to get drunk. I don't know why they're called speakeasies. I mean, alcohol consumption, in my experience, which is considerable, doesn't make alcohol... You know, you don't speak any easier when you're... <laughs> Who had a sense memory there? I went right back to the day. Yeah, you're a good guy. Ah! You're a good guy. <laughs> People back then would uh, make their own booze. Moonshine, it was called. Supposedly, moonshine made you go blind, but it turns out that's just a myth. It was started by moonshiners who masturbated a lot. <laughs> Prohibition, uh, Prohibition made anyone with access to alcohol really popular, and that is not right, because popularity should be based on, on things that really matter, like physical appearance and how much money you have. <laughs> You've never been much of a drinker, have you? No, well, sometimes I like to get a little sauce during the show. Yeah, I did. There's been a couple of shows where you were actually hammered. I do remember that. Yeah, I like to, I like to dip into the giggle water now and again. I like that too, but I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> you see that, folks? That's comedy. That's comedy right there. So, listen, let, let me tell you this. This is an amazing thing. I'm, I'm on the, uh, I was on the inter, uh, inter uh, web, and the, uh, I'm, I'm reading this blog about our show. A blog's kind of like a newspaper in today form. And, and it's talking about you and me, and apparently everything between us is scripted and rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> You got the wrong show, partner. I tell you, now, here's how you know. Here's how you know, because if, if we had to rehearse, I would have to get here, what, like an hour before the show or something? <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, no. People have a very hard time thinking that we just talk to each other. People they, don't understand. They don't we're, understand. We're creating here. What? We're making it happen live. Yeah, live. This is without a safety. There's no, there's no, there's no editing. No, nothing. Ting. That's correct, Craig. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Nothing could suck this bag if it's. Yeah. Well, that's that is also my opinion that we we do put on some very mediocre television, which you know if we were to. Uh, you know, rehearse it and, and get it all set, it, you know, it would be even worse. <laughs> because it would be premeditated, you know. Don't you think? People have a very hard time with that, though. I'm, they, no one believes it. I like me doing this now. People will still not believe it. Now well, you're really sticking to the script on this one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, really want to, I really want to get to the end of whatever's on the prompter. <laughs> No, he's kidding, you yeah. bunch of dumbasses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, but this is the thing that we do when we get up near the commercials. Oh, I yeah. ask you, uh, did you just cough there? Could you wait for the commercials? We're going to the commercials. <laughs> the hell, man? The Have hell? some decency. Well done, well done, because she was right on cue in the script right there when she coughed. Yeah, nice. It's a lady in the audience, cough, cough, and then we go, and then we do the. <laughs> go on, Jeff. All right, let's do it. Say, folks, meth mouth got you down. Why not finish the job with Uncle Mickey's spunky dust? Say bye-bye to those remaining pearly whites and hello to acute paranoia. enjoy the show so much they watch it from their car <laughs> in their cars Jeff what they do is they they uh, the folks that like the show in their cars that they re uh, rethink their GPS's and the show comes up <laughs> that's insane yeah I know but that's how clever the kids are now they can take you know they're like little MacGyvers they can take anything and make it do another thing using computer science <laughs> They're little MacGyver. Yeah, yeah, little MacGyver. yeah. I like that. Yeah, man. well, that's what it says in the script, Jeff, and that's what I'm going to say. Right, little well, MacGyver. Yeah, it says Jeff laughs at the suggestion. That, yeah, that's... Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And the other thing I saw I read in this blog was that not only do we, maybe if we don't script it, we meet before the show. <laughs> <laughs> we meet before the show to work out the beats. Yeah, you come in and <laughs> you come in and talk to a robot by yourself. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's right. You see how many beats you work out then. Mm. Hey, they got the masturbation joke, I think. I'm working out a few beats right now. Yeah. yeah. All right, what time is it, Jeffrey Pearson? It's that time on the show where we read your tweets and emails and adhere closely to a tightly written script. <laughs> My name is Scooter. I'll fix your computer. I'm a happy guy and a dope troubleshooter. When you go take support, you'll be talking to me. I got more patience than Mahatma Gandhi. And email. And email. All right, this is from uh, Jessica in Memphis, Tennessee. You ever been down there in oh, Memphis, yeah. Tennessee? You ever been down there? there? Just you ever been in Graceland? Have you been to Graceland? Yeah, Elvis is so known. Absolutely. I... Have you? No, I have. <laughs> Well, you don't like Elvis? I'm a big fan. I, I was a huge Elvis fan. Well, I still am, but Elvis is... He's not working. Do you own a jumpsuit? <laughs> I do. I actually have worn it on the show. You wouldn't have that photograph of me in that jumpsuit lying around anywhere, would you? I bet you could find it if I kept talking for another, what, 15, 20, hour and a half? It'll be a long show tonight. You might want to get another bong going. <laughs> Uh, what were we talking about? Yeah. Anyway, Jessica in Memphis, Tennessee says, Dear GP and the Fergs, that's our crime-fighting names. He's GP, I'm the Fergs. We solve mysteries, right? da da da, -da! <laughs> Dear GP and the Fergs, I think my roommate might be taking money out of my purse after I go to bed at night. What's a good way to catch a red-handed? Hmm. <laughs> I think what you want to do is put some kind of live animal in your purse. <laughs> Something aggressive, like a, a pine marten or a stoat. <laughs> Neither of which uh, are, are, are available in the United States. <laughs> So maybe a raccoon, or a, 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 a raccoon in there, or maybe something aggressive, something though that when she puts her hand in to take the money, she'll be bitten, make a terrible noise, and you can come out and you go, oh, what happened? She goes, oh, uh, a raccoon jumped at me, and you go, aye, that raccoon was in my purse. Now I'm, uh. <laughs> Man, I bored myself halfway through the sentence. Well, that's why you gotta stick to the script, pal. Yeah, I know. The minute I wander off the script, all sorts of crap starts happening. <laughs> This is from Melissa in Baldwin Park in California. I, I don't know if you can tell from this, but Melissa's a swan. Mm. You know that swans mate for life? Oh. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean like they stay. It means that when they start having sex, they don't stop till they die. Yeah, that's what happened to me. You had sex with a swan? Yes, I did. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. That's illegal. Not where I'm from. No. <laughs> where are you from? Uh, Cleveland. <laughs> so you're telling me that it's legal to have sex with a swan? That's true. In Cleveland? Yes, since Prohibition, well, there was an well, ordinance no, passed. Wait. wait, no, so they tagged it on in the 21st Amendment? Someone snuck it in there? It's in there, I've known Drew Carey's from Cleveland. I've known Drew for a long time. He has never once even batted his eyes at any kind of poultry. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, wait, no, wait, no, that's not entirely true. I did see him get a bit, bit, bit frisky with some chicken once. <laughs> he, he had some feathers in his mouth at the party I was at. You can, we can't do any of this? Oh, it's in the script. You could have told us beforehand. <laughs> All right, uh, this is Melissa in Baldwin Park says, Dear Craig and Jeff, I'm graduating with a BA in Spanish. Good for you. All right. <laughs> We had a time already? It seems like very quick tonight. It wasn't this quick when we timed the script earlier on. We rehearsed this like ten times. I know, come on, we've been working on this all day. I mean, and then, you know, Craig throws things off to the side and then lifts a cup, takes a drink. <laughs> Looks back at Robot. And then I make a train noise. <laughs> 
Spontaneous laughter ensues. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Tonight is starring on uh, New Girl, which is that show which is on Fox. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Take a look at this. <laughs> Told you it was good. Justin Long, everybody. Justin It's good to see you. It is a pleasure to be back on the show. To be back on the show. It's been so long, Jeff. How are you? How are you tonight? I am well. How are you? I'm good. I was I was partying with uh, Jesse. Oh yeah, yeah. Stage. Yeah. Yeah. We were. Uh, you know why? You know why they call him Jesse? As he has that thing with the marijuana. That's classic Jesse. That's classic Jesse. He's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like, you see when you go up to Jesse. Jesse. By the way, if you've forgotten, is the guy right. whose uh, wife is in watching the show in the studio audience tonight, and he's waiting in, Ooh, la, la. Car, uh, in the car. In the car. I'm dying to know what he's doing in there. I want to know about their marriage. I want to know. And let's address the elephant in the room. In Jesse's defense, sweet lady, but the laugh is a bit. No, the it's laugh a bit is brainy. a real thing. No, 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 that, that's a real thing. In Jesse's defense. No, no, but there, Jesse has no defense. Yeah, he no, has no, no it's defense. True, it's true. He brought his wife that's over crazy. a thousand miles. I don't. I so want to come and see the show, and he sat in the car. It's crazy. <laughs> what is he doing, Jesse? Will you come out here? I brought no, him. No, he's not here. He's um, not here. That, and I miss Jeff. Uh, you were workshopping a new voice, and I liked it. It was a little. By curious, maybe, and I really, oh, I, I miss you, it. you fancied my voice. I no, I, I like it, Jeff. I like no. his regular voice. Right. Uh, we had two weeks of completely random personalities for Jeff while he was being rebooted. He's a workshop. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was a terrible. Uh, oh, people were so angry. Yeah. Yeah, Jesse came down from Northern California. <laughs> and, have you ever been up there to Northern California? Because uh, you like wine. I love wine. Why yeah. do you say that? Well, you know, you got to... I actually don't. I don't No, like no, you, you look a bit like a drinker, a little I, bit. I, I, I do, I, and I just came back from Vegas, so uh, speaking of drinking... Oh, uh, do, you, do you, you you have a problem then? I, well... <laughs> I'm lying down for this. Um, I, I, uh, I, I wouldn't say a problem. I, I just... Um, yeah, but with wine specifically, I do. I, I have a conditioned response to it. I have like a Pavlovian response. When I was 19 years old, I got so drunk on wine, and I, I threw up in a way that was like, it was like a, 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 a bath faucet of just red, <laughs> just, you know, when you pour on, just like a, a constant throat. I went back to the table, and I continued drinking, and I was so sick for two days that I, I not even a funny story, uh, just sort of a sad alcoholic. <laughs> It's um, kind of a think of me as your counselor. Yeah, no, I do. Right. This is what I. This is why I'm here. Well, I think we're going to have to stage an intervention. We've I, got. Uh, yeah. We got Jesse <laughs> going to come in from outside. And we're going to be. We're going to do dueling interventions. Yeah, we're going to yeah, do like a marriage intervention on him, and he'll do a. They don't need a marriage intervention. They've worked it out for themselves, right? Yeah, yeah, they're fine. She, yeah. she, she seemed very spunky. Speaking of spunky dust, she seemed spunky. She, she yeah, no, she, I think she's on crystal meth. I th oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think? So, listen, you were up in Vegas. Did you do any of the old uh, spunky dust when you were up there? No, no. I, I, I said I want to go to Vegas and not do any spunky. I'm going to try Vegas without spunky dust. And what, so what did you Terrible. do? What did that was you do? awful. Um, I did. I met. Um, we were in a cab. We had a. I thought for sure I was on. We were in a cab. I was with my, my brother and, and, and two friends and. Uh, Christian, if you're watching, uh, and uh, hey, Christian. So I waved. My whenever, mother. whenever you come to the uh, show, Christian, you're welcome to leave your vehicle and come on. <laughs> in the car. Yeah. Um, but we, we, and this woman started, uh, we, I asked her what was the crazy, she was very forthcoming, she was, we were chatty, and, and uh, I Is this said, woman you met, was she dancing or something? No, she was driving us in a cab. Oh, driving in the cab. Yeah. Did I not mention that? I'm sorry. Uh, and so I said, well, what, uh, what's the craziest thing you've ever, and without hesitating, she said, well, I, um, I routinely take people to have sex with my grandmother. She said this. <laughs> 92 years old, the grandmother is. I'm not kidding. I'm not making this up. I swear to God. Mm. She may have been making it up, but she right, said right. it in such a way. She, so, she seems so earnest about it. So she routinely takes people to have sex with her. She pimps out her 92-year-old grandmother, Maggie, her name is. And I said, and I said, what? I said, well, what, what does she do in the meantime? What does she do when she's not on the clock? And she said, I'm not kidding. What did you say there? When she's not on the clock. Clock. Yeah. Clock. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoes. Yeah. 
It's just comedy rules, you understand. Mm, yeah, sure. Uh, when in doubt, look for a Crikey. reference. <laughs> uh, a clock reference! Yeah. A clock reference! Right, right. Um, anyway, she pimps out her name. Well, where was I? Yes, you, you were talking about the 92-year-old whore I said, in Las Vegas. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but, but I said, well, what does she do in, in her spare time? Like, what is this nymphomaniac? And, I, and she said, again, without hesitating, uh, need a work. She loves need a work. <laughs> Need to work and she watches TV. So I was kidding. Do you think she's watching the show now? She might be. Uh, Maggie, she said her name was. No, um, you better not. No, 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 it was no, a made up no. last name. No, it, no. Was, uh, it was actually. Sparkles or something like that. No, yeah. no it was, uh, it was, it was ha ha Hang Long. Hang, she hang? said her name was Judy Judy Hanglong. I know the last name was made up, right. and, and her grandmother was Maggie, which is such a sweet sounding. Like I picture her doing needlework and like did needlework. You, do you have a thing for? That, for yeah, do you are you yeah. are you physically physically know. attracted to uh, Missed that? people? Um, am I? Uh, oh God, this is a loaded. Loaded. Again. Dude, you arrived with the story of the 92 year old woman. Right this is, here, this is not a scripted show. Oh, no. uh, d d despite what the, the blogosphere might say. No, right, I which now you know. So, what were you doing in Vegas then? You weren't looking for old hookers? What were you looking for? Um, <laughs> no, but I found. But I ended up finding love with a 92 year old age. Now, wait, uh, let it go, man. Sorry, sorry. Let it go. It's, it's just what happened. Uh, All right. So I, what, I, I went there. Um, I, I went there to, to go to a, the new Cirque du Soleil show. Oh, the Michael Jackson. Michael one? Jackson. Yes, yeah, fun. Was it good? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah I've heard of him. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I saw fun. him play live. You know. Did you really? Yeah, I did. I saw him at, at Wembley Stadium on the Bad Tour. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Wow. And do you do you remember? Was this back in the day? I mean, yeah. back in your yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I saw him at all. Actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What was that? I don't, one? I don't know. What was that one? You I, I can't stop thinking about Maggie. No, no, Jeez. no. Dude, we can't anyway. We're out of time. So, what do you want to do? You want a mouth organ uh, or do you want to go for the big cash prize? Or a new one I've just thought of. Guess what's in the box? Oh. <laughs> Again, speaking of Maggie. No. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, the yeah, lady no, with the cough like that. Okay, well. I, what, what, I don't get to do awkward pause. Well, you can do awkward pause. I'm dying to do awkward pause. Everybody wants to. Oh, the okay, well, no, no, I'll do, I'll do what's in the box. I'll get, do guess what's in the box. Well, you know, I don't know what that is yet. It's a brand new right now, so... <laughs> Could I do both? Could I do a little awkward pause? Yeah, you can do awkward okay. pause and then, and then finish the awkward pause by guessing what's in the box. Okay. And the box is in my mind, and what's in it is unknown only by Jeff. <laughs> So, yeah. so Jeff will be able to tell you if you got the uh, got the right answer. If you get the right answer, you win fifty dollars. So what time is the shadows, Demons? It's time for the big cash prize. Big cash prize. All right. There you go. Okay. So now you have to awkward pause and then guess what's in the box. Did you say something? <laughs> so, what do you think's in the box? I'm going to say a life size cutout of Taylor Lautner. <laughs> Jeff? Is that you, correct? my friend, are absolutely correct. Correct! Yeah. $50! Yeah. Yeah. $50! We were right back, everybody. That was awesome. <laughs> Welcome back! Welcome back to the show! Jeff, say hi to the folks! Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We missed you. We hope you enjoyed the commercial breaks or sitting in your car masturbating. <laughs> My next guest is a very beautiful actress. She's in the new film, Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. It's in theaters December the 16th. Oh! <laughs> Take a look at this. <laughs> Please welcome the lovely Numi Rapos, everybody.
thank you. Uh, how are you? You look lovely. I, oh, I, thank you. you. know, really very nice. I like the sparkly business. Yes. And, the, and, and the shoes, the yeah, sparkly shoes. Very sparkly, very nice. Are yeah. they famous? They're very famous. Really? Yeah. Where, are they made by a famous designer? Yeah. Who? She's Epsonotti. I have no voice. Uh, I've been talking for four days, so... Why? Are you mm. on spunky dust? Oh, no, you know what? Yeah, I wanna... Okay, this is quite funny. Do you know what naughty salt is? Naughty salt? Yeah. <laughs> I, think I, I think I probably do. What is, what is naughty salt? Naughty salt is like the old word for, um, for coke. Cocaine? Yeah. I believe I may have ah. encountered it once or twice. In the 1980s, yeah. I, I ran into s some people. Some naughty salt people. Is that what they call it? Naughty yeah. salt? Yeah. Your uh, you're, uh, accent, you're uh, Swedish, of course. I'm half Spanish, half Swedish. Really? So you're Swanish? I'm Swanish. <laughs> And I lived in Iceland for a while when I was Iceland? Yes. Oh, I love Iceland. Its capital city is Reykjavik. <laughs> yes, that's correct. And one of my favorite bands, Sigur Rós, are from Iceland. Yeah. And they, they're not real people. They're pixies that live in a volcano. That's true. You know, I actually, actually, I grew up in a volcano for a couple of years. Did you really? I did. And my mom was married to an Icelandic man. So you had a Spanish mother and an Icelandic father? No, um, stepdad, Icelandic stepdad. Right, okay. My, my real father was a um, flamenco singer from Spain. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a bit sexy. Yeah, <laughs> flamenco yeah. is very sexy, isn't it? It is quite sexy. Yeah, it is. Quite, <laughs> yes, very, uh, very emotional and yes, strong and yeah. powerful. Yeah, no, it makes my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I saw you in the American audiences know you from the uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo, the Swedish one. Yeah. yeah. But they're they they they're making one in English now as yeah. well. You know. They are. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> So, do you live in Sweden? Um, I don't know anymore. You know, I'm kind of uh, traveling all the time. I have suitcases. Are um, you a hobo or something? I'm a hobo. I'm, I'm almost... You, uh, that's, I was hitting... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah that's My a, water. Yes, yes. Help yourself. Okay. Okay. Can I have a sip? Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it gives me my voice back. Yeah, maybe it does. <laughs> <clears throat> well, yeah, it's much... No, it's exactly no. the same. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, just anyway. relax, you know, <laughs> relax, take deep breaths, about 20 minutes you're going to feel very good. <laughs> what was in that? Just water. Yeah. yeah it's just you water. know what I was thinking about when I, when I saw you before? What? I saw, when I saw Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Peterson? No, you're lovely. The robot Jeff yeah, Peterson, that's his name. Yeah. 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 That's, you know, I did this movie called um, The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, like the third movie. Yeah, yeah, of course. I look like him then, you know? You were very, yeah, very kind of... Well, Elizabeth Salander is very, you know, I mean, yeah. it's very you're starved. And Were you ever a punk rocker yourself? In I was. Really? I was, actually, yeah. When I was 14, 15, I was blonde. Nancy Spungen was my heroine, I, you know. Nancy, a, Nancy Spungen? Yeah, Spungen, you know, oh, Spungen. a sort of vicious... A girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a... I wanted to look like her, so I had a lot of makeup, blonde, well, piercings. Yeah, I, I, I looked like that, too, actually. You yeah, yeah. <laughs> at that time, I was very into punk rock and wearing a blonde wig. I actually, d I did dye my hair blonde for a little while. Yeah, yeah, me too. I did it, you know, myself. It looked not that good, but um, I don't know. I think it probably looked better on you than it did on me. I just looked like a sort of angry old lady. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like I look now, actually. It's, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. So you don't know where you live anymore. You're traveling the world um, making films. That's very Yeah, exciting. I was in London for a year when I did Sherlock, and then I did oh. Prometheus, so I was in London. I think I'm going to buy a place in London. Oh, really? Very expensive in London. It's I nice, know. though. Nice. It's nice. Yeah, I, I used yeah, to live I like there. it. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Islington, I lived. Yeah. Cool. You know it? I, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Upper Street, up, up there, Old East End. Very nice. Yeah, it's lovely. It's very nice. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. You get lovely... You get lovely uh, naughty uh, souls. You naughty can get soul, yeah. whatever oh, you naughty want. Naughty souls. London's <laughs> I remember, yeah. yeah. So you're going to live in London, you think? I think so, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. You had a nice time making the, uh, the Sherlock Holmes. Do you play the lady detective? Um, actually, I play a gypsy. Kind of like the way you are. Yes, kind of. <laughs> Going from town to town <laughs> yeah. with your suitcases. Do you exactly. dance and play the violin? Absolutely. In what? the film? No, I, I dance. I dance like the old kind of traditional gypsy dance. 
and I was, um, it was quite funny, I was sitting on this press conference the other day and mm. Robert was sitting next to me and, and Guy Ritchie on the other side. Right. And then some reporter asked um, Guy Ritchie, what was, what was the most fun scene to shoot? And then he was well, like... These reporters really, they go after, the, they make people work, don't they? But it's, yes. it's quite, what was the most fun you had? <laughs> you know what he said? Yeah, what? It was when I forced Noomi and, and uh, um, Jude Law to dance to the gypsy music in the gypsy camp for three days and it's only 15 seconds in the movie. Wow. It's quite cruel. Three days of dancing? Yeah. Gonna need some naughty salt for that, aren't you? <laughs> That's pretty gnarly. Yeah, a lot. Well, uh... <laughs> she doesn't mean it. Actually, I, cocaine is still illegal in the United States. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So no one takes it. <laughs> exactly. Hey, um, we are we're we're out of time. Do you fancy a mouth organ, awkward pause, guess what's in the box, or a big cash prize? Guess what's in the box. Okay, well that there is cash involved in that too. That is you, it? Yes, if you can guess what's happening. The box is in my mind. This is a new one. The box is in my mind. I don't know what's in the box. Only Jeff Peterson knows what's in the box. Okay. So if you get the question if you guess correctly though, mm. you win fifty dollars. Okay. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Oh, thanks, everybody. Okay. All right. Uh, so what time is it, Shadow Steven? It's time for the big cash prize. Cash prize. All right. Um, <laughs> I forgot that we made the audience shout big cash prize as well. <laughs> kind, of, kind of gave me a fright a little bit. Kind of <laughs> pooed myself a little bit there. All right. Uh, okay. Using your mind, guess what's in my box. <laughs> Naughty thoughts. I think you'll have to be more specific. <laughs> um. An object, for example. Um, okay. I think it's a pipe. A pipe. Any particular type of pipe? <laughs> A, just a pipe. A pipe. Right. With um, something strong in. Well, like a fireman? <laughs> uh, right. Well, let's see, if, let's see if you're correct. Jeff, is she correct? Is there a pipe with a naughty fireman in my mind? I'm seeing it now. Oh, yeah. It is a naughty fireman. It is a naughty fireman! If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and would like to attend a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please call 323-570-0059 or visit oneiota.com. Sorry, everybody, the show seems to have run very long tonight. It didn't run this long in rehearsals, but apparently... <laughs> we have just time to show a picture of me in my Elvis costume. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. Say good night.